2 billion years into 24 hours. Humans have lived on this earth for a mere 3 seconds. Yet, in these 3 seconds, we have created so much harm that we are close to reach the point of no return. Like the resource it seeks to protect, while the preservation must be dynamic. Changing as conditions change, seeking always become more effective. And that's why I'm here to present three major problems that are hindering us from moving towards a better future with a better ecosystem. To begin with, let's have a look at our first problem, illegal hunting. 30,000 African elephants are still killed by poachers each year out of a continent-wide population of about 400,000. So we need to restrict illegal wildlife trade as it directly threatens the survival of many species in the wild where tigers are poached for their body parts, pangolins for their skills, and elephants for their tusks. And it's pretty easy to know why. Imagine an elephant tusk is worth about 368 ringgit Malaysia per kilogram. 2016, United Nations estimated a value of illegal wildlife trade which is the fourth most lucrative global crime after drugs, humans, and arms. Let me make this clear. I want you to see the connection and to see that this is a transnational crime that you cannot leave to your pressure net but thinly stretched wildlife crime officers to take it alone. So we need to educate our community lessons about how important is biodiversity, how important is wildlife preservation need to be included in our syllabus in school. This way, we can totally make the number zero, but at least we could decrease it. And our third solution for this problem, we need to encourage the production of sustainable wildlife goods such as those certified by Marine Stewardship Council and reduce demand for illegal wildlife parts and product by encouraging others to ask questions and get the facts before buying any wildlife product. On the other hand, our second problem, habitat loss. It is primarily human cause. The clearing of land for farming, grazing, mining and urbanization impact the 80% of global species who call the forest home. 15 billion trees are cut down each year. According to a study about tree density published in Nature, the number of trees worldwide has decreased 46% since the start of civilization. Around half of the world's original forests have disappeared and they are still being removed at 10 times rate higher than any possible level of regrowth. As tropical forests contain at least half of the earth species, the clearance of some 17 million hectares each year is a dramatic loss. So we came up with some solutions. The first one, we need to organize reforestation projects. This includes assessing the current condition of the land and land use, knowing which local species will work the best and having the infrastructure and support to scale seeding production at nurseries, developing a solid pre, during and post planting plan, and ensuring that local staff and volunteers are on board. By planting all these trees in areas that have been degraded or deforested, reforestation helps the environment by guaranteeing or accelerating the establishment of healthy forest structure by regrowing the forest canopy and preserving biodiversity within the ecosystem. This way, we could provide habitat for over 80% of the world's terrestrial biodiversity, including wildlife. Hence, we could help to protect endangered species. But there's one problem. Trees are being implanted under several initiatives every year, but they still don't match the number of the ones we already lost. So we came up with a second solution, by banning clear cutting of forests. The best solution for deforestation is to curb the felling of trees by enforcing a series of rules and laws to govern it. Deforestation in this current scenario may have reduced, however, it would be too early to assume. So this will curb the total depletion of the forest cover as it is a practical solution and is very flexible. Our third solution, by reducing the consumption of deforestation product, palm oil is a common ingredient in absolutely everything we see around us. So make it a simple habit to get a quick peek at the ingredients and try finding ways to reduce consumption or opting for organic, local soil products and if possible, avoid it completely. And our last but not least problem is marine pollution. It is estimated that plastic pollution kills 
100,000 mammals every year. So the banning of the use of single-use plastic would be very important. Marine wildlife such as seabirds, whales, fish and turtles mistake plastic waste for prey and most of them die of starvation as their tarmacs full with plastic. Imagine eating foods that are filled with plastic and toxic. And our second solution for this problem, by lowering the price of biodegradable bags, in general, the cost of biodegradable or compostable bags are 3 to 6 times more than traditional bags, according to BESF. So this way, we can convince everyone to avoid the use of single-use plastic. In all these problems that I have stated, the solutions won't work if I am the only one who's doing it. It is not only my problem, it is not only the government's problem, it is our problem. So let's tell the whole world that we need to save the nature. If you can't excite people about wildlife, how can you convince them to love, cherish and protect our wildlife and the environment they live in? Remember, if you can change your community, you can change the country. And if you can change your country, you can change the world.